first video in the camper van. Sorry, that intro was really weird, wasn't it? Um, this is the first video in the camper van renovation diary series, which will be a mini series following the journey of Dean and I completely ripping the guts out of a Renault traffic camper van and redoing it all ourselves. Those of you that watch my kind of like more regular vlogs will know that we recently bought a camper van and that I had said that this series was on its way. The reason I've decided to consolidate this kind of journey into a, a mini series, and I say mini because I honestly don't think this will exceed maybe three videos, four videos at a push, is because I think to save people who aren't interested in this having to sit through camper van each chat, um, camper van chat in each weekly vlog, I'll just remove it and have a dedicated series. And also, I think from a reference point of view, having these videos in their own little corner will be much easier if people want to come back to them or find specific information. You can just come to these videos rather than having to trawl through vlog stuff. Um, so yeah, we bought a camper van. <laughs> um, about At this point, it would have been about six, seven weeks ago. Very spare of the moment decision because that is the way Dean and I are. We have these kind of like moments where we're like, shall we do this? Yeah, let's do it. And then we kind of want to execute that idea very quickly. Although it was quite spare of the moment, it was a decision that we both knew in our head and our hearts um, that it was quite wise for us both. We really, really, really like going on road trips. It is one of our favourite ways to explore areas. It's something that we've done many times in Australia and we've done a couple here. We've done two here in the UK now. Um, and it's something that we just want to continue doing, um, definitely around the UK and fingers crossed around Europe at some point. So from a cost effective point of view, it made sense for us to have our own camper van because it usually costs between 900 to 1200 pounds just in rental fees each time we do it. And if it's something that we continue to do, it just, yeah, from a cost point of view, it seems wise to have our own camper van. And also as an investment, we were thinking the more we see people do this kind of thing for obvious reasons, because travel is still very sort of here, there and everywhere, isn't it? Why not try and get ourselves a bargain now while we can? And if by some sort of horrible turn of events, we don't actually end up using it or we don't enjoy it, we can easily get our money back. So we have bought a Renault traffic camper van. I will insert a picture here. It's big, it's bright yellow, it's from 1991 and we absolutely love it. Now this intro is gonna be a little bit boring. Feel free to skip forward if you just kind of wanna to get to the fun stuff, but I just want to sit and give some kind of, just a little bit of context as to how we acquired the camper van or just to sort of talk about the journey, uh, the buying journey, just in case anyone's interested in cost or just how we bought the camper van. So, to start with, I was checking eBay and Gumtree, mostly. Yeah, pretty much just eBay and Gumtree. Didn't really know what we wanted. We just wanted a camper van. We had a kind of budget of £3,500 max. We wanted something that was mechanically sound, needed virtually no external work, just something that we could rip out all the internal and start again. And we found a... So before we got the Renault Traffic, we only viewed one other camper van and we found a VW, I think it was a T25 high top. I will insert a video here so you can see what it was like. And it was, this was on eBay. The starting price was £3,500 with no reserve. So my immediate thought was, okay, this guy uh, is probably open to offers starting at £3,500. This seems like an absolute steal for a VW. Let's go look at it, it's only an hour away. So we went and had a look and like, it didn't wow us. It kind of looked like it needed a lot of external work. Um, it definitely needed loads done internally. There wasn't anything functioning really inside, but externally, a couple of red flags, like, looked like, the, the, I mean, the paint job was terrible. It looked like he'd tried to cover up some rust patches. Um, it looked like the kind of project that you'd acquire thinking it would be one thing and then actually you'd, a whole load of other problems would unfold as you go along. Um, however, we were kind of still thinking it's £3,500. Like, this is quite a steal for a VW. Um, so I said to the guy, like, would you consider something more towards three? And his response outright was, no, I want 5,500 for it. Which seemed a bit contradictory to this, uh, 
guy's eBay listing. Um, and he was like, I could do five. And I was just thinking, this is not, this is so out of our budget and it's not really what we want. So we walked away from it. And actually in hindsight, very, very glad we walked away from it because afterwards we sent some pictures to a friend of ours who um, used to own a camper van, a VW camper van rental business. And he was like, yeah, you really dodged one there. So yeah, it's a good job you walked away from it because there was a lot of red flags that he spotted. So um, continued on eBay and Gumtree, couldn't really find what we were looking for. Um, everything just like needed so much mechanical work within our budget anyway. Um, just loads of them didn't have MOTs, rust, all that kind of thing. And we were beginning to think that actually this was going to be a much more expensive endeavour than we initially thought. And then I started looking on marketplaces in Facebook marketplace because people always rave about it being this place where you can find these incredible bargains from literally like your neighbor. And lo and behold, I went on there and there it was, the Renault traffic for 3,500 pounds and it was about half an hour away from us. So immediately messaged the guy, can I do this, you know, now? Uh, and he said, yep, come today. The sooner you come, the better because I've got lots of people viewing it. And it just so happened on that day, Dean's dad was actually working in the town that the camper van was in. Now, when we, what we've learned actually now is when you're buying a camper van, the sort of main things you want to look at are the, the underside of the camper van to check for any rust or any just like major issues and the engine. Now, I, you open up a bonnet and I don't have a clue what I'm looking at. I don't even know how an engine is turned. So, um, and Dean doesn't know too much about what to look for either. However, his dad does. So he very kindly went and looked at it for us. And his feedback was, so immediately, like we knew we wanted it. Like we were like, it's, he was like, it's mechanic, it's so mechanically sound, can't see anything wrong with it whatsoever. So yeah, from that point, we knew we wanted it, went and viewed it, fell in love with it. But we were a bit like, why is this 3,500? for a camper van that is, you could basically drive away and use it immediately. Everything was functioning. The inside was all ready to go. It came with an awning, a fully equipped kitchen. We were like, what's, is there an issue here? But the seller was really open and transparent with us and said, I am selling it at a very low price, but that's because I can't use it anymore because I'm caring for my mum full time. So I can't get out in it. And at this point, I just want to get my money back that I put back into it. Um, and eventually, like we, we were talking to him for ages and he just said, you know what, you seem like you're really into like camper vans and stuff. And I can tell that this is something that you really want to do. Um, so I'll give it to you for 3,200. And now we have a camper van. <laughs> I still can't believe that we've bought a camper van, to be honest. Um, it just seems like such a, a big thing to do. Um, it's like one of those things I've always wanted to do, but never actually thought I'd actually be able to do it. So the next bit of footage that you will see is us completely stripping out the inside until it is a shell. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this series. Day one of ripping out the interior of the camper van. It's going on. So it's been about a week since we've done anything on the camper van. So as you previously saw, we completely ripped out the entire interior of the camper van, literally stripped it back to its bare bones. And then we went into like the planning stage. So rather than starting to put stuff in um, immediately, we thought actually we need to have a proper plan as to how we want the interior laid out, including 
full dimensions, planning where electrics were going to go, plumbing for the sink and wiring for the hob, all that kind of thing, where we wanted the water tank. Just there's a lot of elements that you have to kind of like fit into a small space. So there was a lot of it's just basically like Tetris, just trying to like slot everything in. Um, and I've also created a mood board of how I kind of want the camper van to look inside, a sort of colour palette, should we say, and sort of textural palette. Um, so yeah, we've, we've done all that. I will show you the plans now. They're not that visually uh, interesting, but they'll give you an idea of how we want the layout to look inside. And I'll, I'll show you the mood board as well. I think it'll be easier if I do a screen recording of my laptop rather than using the vlog camera and pointing it at my laptop screen and you having to watch some wobbly footage and a dirty laptop screen. So in just a moment, a very beautiful screen recording will pop up. Ta-da! Okay, so as you can see, this is my mood board. It's quite small. I created it mainly for you guys so that you can kind of see what I'm envisioning in my head. I'm not the best at describing things. I'm much more of a visual person. So I thought if I create this, then you can all envision along with me how I would like the interior of the camper van to look. Really minimal, really pared back, lots of light wood. I just want to keep it as light um, and as minimal as possible, really. Uh, fuss free, shall we say. So we're thinking oak veneered MDF for most of the cabinetry and the bench and everything. We did toy with the idea of trying to create a sort of faux concrete looking floor. That's what this grey bit is here. But in hindsight, we're thinking that this isn't really that practical in terms of hygiene, health and safety and just wear and tear. We don't think this is a good idea anymore. So we've decided to use a studded rubber anti-slip floor because this will be much easier to clean. It'll be much more practical, be a lot safer. And we found this type of flooring in some really cool colours. We found a really nice sage green, we found a light blue. I'd also like to get a sample of maybe a buttermilk sort of light yellow. Not too dissimilar from this tone actually. But yes, there are, there'll be lots of beige tones within the camper van. All the soft furnishings, very light, very natural. I really like this pad here. This was kind of like a main, this and this image actually were kind of my main inspirations for the interior of the camper van. And then, to kind of create additional storage, we're thinking about cladding the interior of the camper van in a slatted wood system so that when the camper van is in situ, we can use the slats to hook things onto. Maybe um, create some boxes that kind of hook onto here so that when the camper van is in situ, we can use those boxes to store things. Um, and then that was just a little sink and tap bit of inspiration. So yeah, you kind of, hopefully you get the overall vibe on this little mood board. Um, so yeah, hopefully it won't to look too dissimilar from this sort of palette. Moving on to the plans. So this is a bird's eye view of the how we'd like the interior to be laid out. So imagine that the driver's seat is here, the passenger seat is here, this is the side door, this is the back door, and then there's a window here. There's also a window uh, on this side as well. So we'd quite like two benches either side that face each other because Although that lots of camper vans tend to have an L-shaped seating area, but we quite like the idea of being able to face each other when we're eating and just sitting in the camper van. On our last Australian road trip, this was how the camper van was laid out and we really enjoyed being able to sit facing each other. So this will they'll, we'll create a system where wood, um, panels of wood will sit in here and here to create our bed. Um, we're also gonna create uh, a smaller panel that can sit here. Potentially maybe the table will actually transform into this bit, we're not sure yet. To create a sort of more of a sofa vibe. So if we didn't want the entire bed laid out, we could just pop this slat across and then uh, put a pad here and then just chill out on this U-shaped seating area. I hope that makes sense. It's really difficult to kind of explain how the system of turning this from seating into a bed um, will work without uh, and a bit more of like a, it, it's just hard to explain with just this plan, but you, you'll see when we start building it basically. So then we're gonna have the this L-shaped kitchen. We decided to put the sink in the hob here because the window is here. So in terms of ventilation, this is much better. And also just nice when you're cooking to be able to look out the window. Then we'll have fridge, 
and then some storage here and then we're thinking about creating a system like a storage system that pulls out further than the width of the van so we've got a, a sort of tent awning that goes on the side of the camper van that you that kind of get, basically gives you additional space that you can stand up in when the camper van's in situ so we're thinking we could have this system that pulls out further than the camper van so when the awning's up we've got this and uh, like a surface to use as prep just another surface to use potentially eat at um but we're not 100 percent sure how that's going to look just yet but we know that we just want something that kind of folds out of the van um i think that's it from bird's eye view and then this is more of a side view that's the top view with exact measurements and then this is the front view of this section here oh yeah we we want to put in a larder for food and then that's the side section here and then this bit here won't be as angular as this so we're actually going to cut the work surface so that it curves really nicely or maybe curves inwards inwards might be quite nice actually but yeah that will look a lot smoother than that it won't be as angular as that so that is the plan hopefully that gives you a bit more of a a better understanding of what we're going for inside i never thought i'd be doing a camper van haul but over the weekend quite a few kitchen components arrived and even though we're not we're nowhere near at the stage of putting in kitchen bits just yet i wanted to get these things secured early because lots of stuff i found was out of stock online because obviously Lots of people are doing very similar projects this summer. So yeah, I wanted to get everything secured so we knew that we had it. Um, so I'll show you what arrived. Sink. Finding a sink was quite difficult. Finding a small sink that was the right measurements for us that was also deep. Lots of small sinks that are very shallow but nothing too deep like this. Um, really standard square sink. We're going to have this sitting sunken in. You know what I mean? So rather than this lip sitting over the onto the worktop, this will sit in to the into the worktop, and then we can create a panel of wood that then sits on top of the sink, so that when it's not in use, it's covered up. And then also tap arrived. How cute is this? It's a tiny little thing. We didn't really want anything too big because when we when we're at campsites, we find that we tend to if we're washing up, we use the camp kitchen. Um, I tend to go to the shower block if I'm like properly removing all of my makeup. So the sink usually gets used for like light rinsing, brushing your teeth maybe, washing your hands, sometimes washing face. Um, it doesn't really get used for, like basically we don't need hot water essentially. So we just thought we'll get a small tap that can just, it's literally just a rinsing tap. Tiny little thing, but um, yeah. Perfect, literally exactly what I was looking for. I will leave links for all of these things below, just in case people are interested in buying them. And then, a really exciting thing. The hob. Also, another really difficult thing to find. We seem to have, I think because the camper van is quite small, but we didn't really want to compromise on things like having a shallow sink or having a single hob. It was difficult for us to find the elements that we wanted that would fit within our camper van, but finally found a double hob that fits the exact measurements. And because this is pretty much the same size as the sink, there'll be some, it'll be like nice and symmetrical. Um, yeah, just a really standard hob. Um, and then, what was the other thing? Oh, the battery. I'm not going to show you the battery. That's really not of any interest. But yeah, four very important, crucial components secured, um, which I'm really pleased about. Right. Um, I'm actually going to go and start helping Dean do some camper van stuff now because he's out while I'm sat here just nattering away to all of you. So today's plan of action for the camper van is to insulate the floor. Is that right? Put some insulation yep. down, fan it out with this stuff, then put some, I'm going to put some wires around in case we need to put anything underneath the floor. Yeah. Because we're essentially making a kind of floating floor and then we'll put some ply on top of the battens, um, which will be the start of our floor. And yeah, yeah first bit of progress.
Jeff's web hosting business urgently needs a senior systems engineer if he wants to keep his clients on cloud nine. No, 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 no worries. We'll get it sorted. Indeed can help him click with the... Right, I thought I'd just stop midway to kind of talk you through the progress we've made and what it is that we're doing. So, as you can see, we've put buttons on the floor, we've insulated the floor, Dean's now putting the floor, like the wooden flooring down. Um, I've just been insulating the sides of the van, I'm now about to start this side. Um, and then, luckily, we've figured out we don't actually need any wires to run underneath the floor because we don't actually have anything going on this side that needs power the only thing that needs power is we're going to put some lights on this side so we're actually going to run the cable over the wheel arch then it will come all along here up and then to the lights um, so that's good we can literally just keep all cables to this side of the van but yeah this is the progress so far I was going to say it's starting to look like a camper van, but I think I'm getting ahead of myself. I just got excited that we were putting a solid floor in, finally. Oh, hey! It's been a while. It's been probably about, I don't know, maybe two and a bit weeks, maybe even three weeks, since I've filmed any camper van related to stuff. Um, we had quite a hold up. Actually, yeah, it'll be about three weeks, I think. Um, everything kind of got put on pause, basically, because after we took everything out of the van, the next step was electrics and that is not something that either of us are knowledgeable in like we just didn't even want to even attempt to do the electrics ourselves even though there are quite a few tutorials out there that do go in full in depth into how you can kind of install a battery and do all of that with a camper van we just thought actually it's probably best if we get someone in who can assist us with this um so we found kind of like a friend of a friend who kind of has done this sort of thing before quite a lot um, but he was away, then we went to Scotland and then he's been really busy for the past week and then literally a few days ago he popped by and explained everything. So the van has now got electrics in, um, which means we can go full steam ahead with pretty much everything else. So um, as you'll see in a moment, Dean has been really, really busy with getting all the kitchen sorted. I've been away for like the past four days um, and... Dean's just been cracking on with everything, which is great. I'm actually just, I look quite frazzled right now because I'm sat just trying to figure out some quite kind of boring things, but things that are quite detrimental to the kitchen layout. I'm um, trying to figure out kind of like a closed system so that the doors and the drawers stay locked while we're driving, because once you get driving, those doors and cupboards and everything are just going to fly open and all of your things are just going to go everywhere. Um, and I don't particularly want to have handles. I don't want to have like locks on the outside or anything. And I don't want to do it with magnets because I don't think magnets are quite strong enough. So I'm looking at some kind of like lock closing, um, like the push to open drawer runners. So you um, literally just to open the drawer you push it and it kind of like clicks open and then when you close it, it clicks closed and then it's locked in. Um, but just trying to find ones that are the correct size. Um, there have been many arguments today. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's been one of those days where I'm just quite stressed because we've not got that long until we go to Wales. We've got about three weeks and we've both, we're have both we both really busy with work. So it means that during the week we can't really set aside much time to do any camper van stuff. So it is pretty much all during the weekend, but obviously the weekend is kind of when you want to relax, but hey ho, it, we've just got to have three solid, really solid weeks of like working, doing the camper van, and then we're off to Wales for 10 days, which will be a lovely break and a much um, needed and a good reward, I think, after doing this. So that's what I'm doing. There's just been arguments over how we want things to look, lighting, um, all of those kinds of things. I always say to people that a renovation project of, of any kind, whether it's house, camper van, you know, like garden, studio, whatever, is a real test. Unless you're really in tune with one another and your tastes are exactly the same, like down to a T, um, you, you do come across like bumps where you do disagree and like 
just I'm a very very visual person everything for me is like mood boards and like I've got this huge save folder on my Instagram and I'm so visual with things whereas Dean is he kind of just like says things and he's like why don't you understand what I'm saying and I'm like because I can't visualize it everything for me has to be visualized whereas Dean isn't as visual as me and um, so that's where we kind of like butt heads and I'm like but you need to draw it you need to show me how this is going to look before you kind of execute it um, whereas he's like look I've got this idea in my head I just want to execute it anyway um I'm going to show you what the progress is um also I've got some floor samples to show you as well which I'll show you while I'm out there um we're kind of struggling with how we want the floor to look we kind of had this idea in our head I'll, I'll just show you rather than explaining here I'll show you when I get there Let's go have a look at the camper van. As you can see, a lot of progress since um, the last update. I'm going to go around the back actually because you'll be able to see much better. So we have a kitchen. Um, I also have a fridge. That black thing there is the fridge. Um, so this will be our main kitchen area. Uh, these three slots here are going to be drawers, that's going to be a drawer, that there will be a cupboard, so it, it'll be a cupboard with shelves inside and then if I actually get inside, on the right hand side here you can see this is going to be where our water tank lives, that's our battery and then this will be a pull out larder where we can store food and other bits. We're thinking we might actually make it, because we had to talk about a full length larder, then we thought about a half length larder, now we're going back to the full length larder idea. Um, and then we will have sink in this corner here, we will have, yeah, sink in the corner, is that right? Sink in the corner. Sink in the corner, then hob. Then hob. Um, and then this will be like a free surface to prep and use. Um, are we still going to do the little flap out thing? No. Not bother? No. No? Okay. I mean... We, uh, it might actually hit the... Yeah, this would have to go in. It would just look It would just be a tiny little thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, we'll have a table. Yeah, we'll have a camping table so we don't really need more surfaces. Um, and if I come back in and sort of from a bird's eye view you can see the lovely curve. Um, and then this is the start of our seating area. Um, we're now just trying to figure out how we want the floor to look because we've got quite a few floor samples. Are they here? Oh yeah, yeah they're all in the corner there, aren't they? Yeah, they're all here. We got loads, didn't we? Yeah. All just various shades of beige <laughs> and grey. Um, but So this is... Uh, MD, oak veneered MDF and then this is ply which is going to have a laminate on top um, so it's it's really the oak that you're going to see the most the oak's going to be the feature so we're trying to find a floor colour that will complement that and initially on the mood board I had beige in my mind but each time we sort of put the beige next to the um, the oak we're not loving it, are we? No. We think it's too beige, it's believe bit, it or not. I never thought I'd say the words too beige, but... It's a bit light. Yeah, everything looks really light and too... It just all comes became a bit wish-washy, didn't it? Yeah, we we kind of liked... Down. Like, I quite liked the sort of uh, green, but no. I don't know if that's something I'm going to get a bit tired of. I also quite liked this oaty colour, but again, we just... I think things are going to come too beige. So we're now thinking black, aren't we? Yeah. A black studded floor. Um, for safety and hygiene, we just think that's going to be... You're not going to see too much of the floor either. That's true. You'll only see this bit, a tiny bit along here. A little bit down here. And a little bit, because there's going to be another seat on this side. Yeah. Sorry, the camera, this camera's quite zoomed in, so you can't really see. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So yeah, there'll be another bench there, so you'll have just like a little strip in the middle there, then you'll have your kitchen floor. So we've, we've got a bin bag out, because we don't have a black sample of this flooring. And rather than wait for that to arrive, we just thought, let's try putting a bin bag down yeah. and seeing how that looks. It's so hard to judge. 
And we're going to have white doors here. So that'll be sort of off white. Off white. Um, hmm. I think it gives it like a solid grounding. Yeah. Because you're going to um, have oak on top. There's going to be. There's going to be a lot of oak around. Yeah, I think you need something quite heavy. It's hard because the bin bag's obviously not jet black. It's like a grey colour. And oh, we. It's going to be the fridge colour, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice matte. Maybe it will complement. Like if the fridge is black, it might. Lovely black right. details. We've got lovely black details. We've got black, on uh, seat belts. <laughs> black seat belts. It's the details there. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it is just black. Because I thought white could look quite good, but then white's going to be really difficult to keep clean. It will get messy. It will get so dirty quickly. so quickly. And actually, every camper van we've rented, it's always been a dark coloured floor. And I've never looked at the floor and thought, oh, that doesn't look right. I really don't want to be to have to be really precious about the floor. <laughs> We've already got to be quite precious about the... Um, everything. Everything else. So I don't want to like go for like a long walk or whatever and then come back and, and have to... Worry about the get floor. Get dressed before I can come in. Hmm. Okay, maybe we try and look for just a, a standard black sort of studded safety mm. floor. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can just make a patchwork floor out of all of yeah, our samples. Yeah, all, all our samples. We could do a lovely patchwork of different shades of beige and grey. Hmm, okay then. But in the interim, this is the progress. This weekend, like we just worked out, we've got two weeks and two days to get this done yeah, in between this working. Weekend. Yeah, this weekend we're really going to get on it. We've made a long list of everything that we need to buy, everything that we need to get done. Um, so, yeah. I think I'm going to leave this video here because it's already getting quite long and I really don't want these videos to exceed 40 minutes. I hope you enjoyed video number one. I think in the second video things will start to get really exciting because it's when all the fun stuff starts happening and it's when the camper van will really start to come into its own. Um, so I'll see you all in the next video.